So are you guys ready to make these hot chocolate bombs? I am so ready. I have been waiting for my mold to come in for the past two weeks and that's been an ordeal in itself. So I'm finally airing my video. So thank you for bearing with me. So I just want to talk a little bit about the type of chocolate that I chose to use for this project. And it's a Merkins uh, wafer chocolate. Um, I ordered it on Amazon and I will link it below. And I got both the dark and the white. And the reason I'm choosing this type of chocolate is because there's a lot of fat content in it and there's great flavor. So it's very easy to work with and it's, you know, it's not as tasty as a Kovacha chocolate, which is, you know, a little more pricey. But again, Kovacha chocolate's a little harder to work with. So this is like middle of the road, best bet. You definitely want to choose this. Um, I wouldn't pick um, the candy wafers that you find in the store. They have all the different colors. And granted, they're easy to access. Um, they're not the best choice because they're a little waxy and not as flavorful. So um, if you do want to color your chocolate, um, different colors, I would recommend buying the compound chocolate and the white wafers and adding an oil-based color to them. And that will allow you to um, color the chocolate without it seizing on you. So let's get started. I did want to show you the mold that I chose. Um, it's not the biggest one, and I know some people prefer the bigger one, but this is a nice size. It's basically the size of a little tangerine, all the little cuties that you get in the supermarket. <laughs> and that's the best way I can describe the size. I just think it's a perfect size, because um, ultimately, my opinion, the larger ones, I think are a little too chocolatey. So you just want the right amount uh, in your drink. So this is like the perfect size. And I will uh, link this mold below if you are interested. So I just want to show you guys um, the flavors that I had done that you saw in the beginning of the video. Aren't these beautiful? Come on guys, take a spin. Show them how pretty you are. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm going to go uh, and talk about uh, the different flavors that I had done. This one is traditional. And I did put the dark chocolate, and it has the regular hot cocoa mix inside with the little mini marshmallows. And I adorn the top with uh, both the white and dark drizzle and a little mini marshmallows on top. This one I call White Christmas because I am a white chocolate lover. Anybody that knows me. <laughs> um, so this one uh, is all white with white drizzle, and I put these little Wilton sugar crystals on top, which I'll show you what I did. So it's these that I used. So if you're interested, and I will link that below. So my next is, I call this Peppermint Kiss. And this is a white chocolate shell as well. And this is filled with white hot cocoa. And I'll show you what brand I used in a second. Drizzle the top with, uh, with white drizzle and peppermint candy on top and inside as well. And the white cocoa mix that I had used for that in the White Christmas is... This brand right here, Arctic White Hot Cocoa, it is a delicious. And I will link this below if you're interested in that as well. So you guys have to try it. This is so, so pretty. Oh my God, look how it sparkles. Okay, <laughs> onward. Um, this one right here is Salted Caramel. And the way that I did the shell on that one, and I wanna demonstrate how I do the shells to you guys. Um, I marbleized the white and dark chocolate into the half sphere and I didn't really um, mess with it too much because I don't want it to muddle I just wanted that nice marbled effect and look how beautiful that came out so that is the shell that I used for that one and inside I have this hot cocoa mix that I had found on Amazon it's from Starbucks and it's salted caramel hot cocoa it is delicious and I will also link this for you as well so this one is filled with that uh, the salted caramel hot cocoa mini marshmallows and a drizzle of caramel oh, yes. and I also uh, adorn the top with the dark chocolate and some Heath Bar toffee chips and I'll show you what I did for those just these right here so I thought that was a perfect combination for that one this one right here I am excited about this one is I call it cinnamon roll and oh my god it tastes just like a cinnamon roll. And the way I did the shell on that one is I took the white chocolate 
and I sprinkled in nutmeg and cinnamon so it's all infused with the, those warm seasonings. So nice. And in the center, I want to show you this mix that I found. It's a cinnamon swirl frappe uh, mix and that's what I put inside. Oh my god, you have to try it and I will link this below for you as well. It tastes just like it's oh, cinnamon roll fresh out of the oven. So, so good. And this one, um, I drizzled the top with the white and took a little bit of the same mix and just kind of sprinkled the top with it. Let's give you a closer look. So, so okay, now this bad boy right here. This is cookies and cream. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you the shell on that one. White chocolate, sprinkled in the cookie crumb. And so it's all speckled with cookie. So good. And inside, I just kept it basic. I put the regular hot chocolate mix, um, the mini mini marshmallows, and drizzled both dark and white on top. Cookie crumb in the center. Beautiful. So I just wanted to show you guys how I prepared my marshmallows because um, when I had done them, it just seemed like, you know, I'm not going to get that many marshmallows in there, you know, for the standard size that they come. So I figured, why not cut them up into little baby ones? So this way I can get at least a dozen or more in there rather than four or five. So this is what I did. I took my marshmallow and I cut it in half. And then I cut it in half again. And that's what I did. I made these little mini pieces of marshmallow and in order for them to not stick to each other, because this is what's happening, they get sticky, I put a little bit of powdered sugar in my dish, kind of tossed them around, so now they're nice and, you know, not as sticky as they would be. <laughs> so when I go to assemble, watch this, now I can get a whole bunch in there. And I think that's much better. So when it explodes in your drink, you have all these little marshmallows coming up rather than four or five, like, oh, yippee. <laughs> so, that's a little tip for you. Okay, guys, are you ready? Look at how luscious and satisfying that is. Oh my god. Okay. So, as you begin preparing your chocolate, just be careful. Um, you want to melt your chocolate very carefully. Do 25 to 30 second intervals. Um, this took about two times on 30 seconds. Steering in between, very important. And what you are doing, you're tempering and preparing your chocolate. You're breaking it down correctly um, with a combination of proper heating and cooling. And this will allow a nice glossy finish on your dome. And I'll show you what I mean. See how glossy? It almost looks like it's plastic. And that's what you're looking for. That's proper tempering. So when you get that glossy shine, that's when you know you did it correctly. So now, I'm going to take your mold and show you what to do. And the one I'm going to demonstrate today is Peppermint Kiss. I just figured it's the most festive one and very pretty. That's what you're going to do. I added not quite a full teaspoon and you're going to push it right up the sides and add a little more actually. Um, you're going to concentrate on those sides because that is the most important and the edge as well you want to get up right up to that edge don't worry about the bottom i'm going to show you and I'm just going to wrap it all the way up so make sure it's consistent all the way around and if you have to turn your mold around just to give it a double check and then what you're going to do you're going to take it give it a tap it's all going to flood to the bottom and what you don't want, you don't want too, too much on the bottom, but you want a nice base because that's where you're going to push this mold out to get it out at the end. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill the rest and I'm going to pop it in the fridge. So I finished uh, filling all of my wells and I just want to give you a close look. So you really want to make sure you are uniform and consistent all the way around, all the way to that edge. And... And if you have a little excess at the bottom, it's fine, but not too, too much, just a little bit. Because again, that's going to be on um, the main pressure point where you're going to push to get these molds out. So you want a little bit of thickness on the bottom, but not too much. Okay, so we're going to pop this in the fridge. Uh, not the freezer. I don't recommend the freezer, only because 
you will, um, it's too harsh and too cold for the chocolate and you will get some dull spots and you won't get that sheen. So um, I recommend the refrigerator for at least three to five minutes. So now we're ready for step two. The chocolate has set. So what I recommend is when you're doing the second layer, don't add as much chocolate and you want to do one at a time because if you fill all the wells and then go back to the first one, you're going to get a big clump of hard chocolate in the middle and then you're going to have a really bad word to say and it's Christmas time. So no bad words at Christmas time. <laughs> so anyway, so you're going to do the same thing, both the sides. Um, don't really concentrate on that center too much because um, you have a pretty nice base there from the first layer. So just concentrate on the sides. And doesn't have to look too pretty because again nobody's gonna see it you're just providing that nice structure let me pop these out yeah. it'll have no problems at all and this should set up right away so just by the chocolate being cold from when you just pulled it out you shouldn't have to put it in anymore so I'm just gonna continue adding my second layer and we will be in business. So now we are ready to unmold and assemble our spheres. And everybody has their own different way of doing it. I chose to do it this way. So I got a nice a heat resistant plate and a Pyrex dish. And what I wanna do, I have some hot water from the kettle. Steaming hot as you can see. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna keep my plate nice and warm for me. I have to make 10 different trips to the microwave or to go and heat up. So by the time I get to it, it should be nice and warm. And you want the plate to be, you know, not burning hot because you don't want to melt the chocolate too much, but uh, you want it hot enough uh, to uh, even out those edges. And I want to show you what I mean. So now we're going to pop out and you want to put pressure right on that center. And it should just pop right out. And look, look at that shine proper tempering right there so just get some parchment lay them down just be very careful you don't want to handle them too much again you know you don't want your hot fingers to melt them and the other little jagged edges we're going to take care of that and i want to show you how to get rid of that so plate's getting warm just be very careful it should come out very very easy See, this is so simple. Don't be intimidated. It's easier than you think. See how important those edges are? I want them. A nice structure on them so they come out nice and easy. Just like that. So I tested my plate and it's just the right temperature. It's nice and warm, but not too hot. And you want to make sure that you have all your ingredients and toppings ready to go because this is a quick process. And if you've worked with chocolate before, you have to be pretty quick sometimes. So you want to take the half sphere. And let me turn my camera. And you want to go to the top of the plate. Sorry. And you want to just rotate that seam right on the one plate. See how it's melting? That's going to be your glue and also you're evening out that edge as well so the top sphere is going to fit nice and snug. So now what you're going to do is grab a teaspoon of powder and you're going to add little mini marshmallows or whatever your toppings of choice would be. See now? Look at all the marshmallows we're getting in there. Yum! And for this one, this is Peppermint Kiss, so I want to do the crushed peppermint. Add that in. And now you're going to grab your second sphere. Rotate it around on that warm plate. Get those nice seams nice and perfect and flush. And then you're going to add the top right on. Perfect. And make such a rock. My thumb right along that seam. Make sure it's nice and sealed. And that's it. It's easy as pie.
So now we are ready to decorate them. So what I did is I added my extra white chocolate to a little Ziploc bag and now I'm going to cut the corner. Just so we can do the drizzle. Now, whoops, it's coming out on me. And just drizzle over the top, just like this. Ooh, so pretty. And if you want to go the opposite direction. There we go. And take a little bit of that crushed candy cane. And just sprinkle over the top. So pretty. And that is all there is to it. So, so easy. And I will link uh, all the recipes for uh, the chocolate bombs that I had explained in the beginning of the video. So you guys have all the steps and recipes if you want to try them. Okay, so this is the part everybody waits for. And try it out. Just drop your bomb in the glass. Make sure your milk is nice and hot. Oh my god, that's so cute. I absolutely love it. Let's just give it a little stir. A little delayed reaction, but that's okay. <laughs> stir it up. Look at all the little bits of candy cane. Oh my goodness. Yum. I cannot wait. And sit and watch a nice movie and drink this. So now, add a little bit of cream. Of course, because I'm all about toppings. <laughs> and this needs just a little more crushed candy cane on top. Oh, yeah. Now you're talking. I want to wish you guys. Happy holiday, and I will see you soon in my next video. It'll be my tree trimming video, so you want to stay tuned for that. So, happy cocoa bombing, everybody, and hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you.